Hello and welcome to the Sisters for Fitness Wellness Show. I'm Stephanie Gaines Bryant. This is our first show back since COVID. I am so glad to be here. And for our first show back, I invited a very good friend to join me. This is my good luck show. <laughs> Karen Kendra Holmes is a transgender advocate. She's been on with us several times, so I thought she'd be a great welcome back guest for me. Thank you so much oh, my pleasure, for Stephanie. joining me today. Well, thanks for having me here on the show today. And um, hopefully uh, we'll be able to educate a few more people in regards to what I've done over the past time I was here, as well as what the future looks like. Now, you've done a lot over the last year or so since we talked. Right now, you're doing some work with the Justice Department. Yes, um, last year in January for 2020, I was part of a program, the Department of Justice Community Relations Services Department was bringing to life as far as bridging the gap between the transgender community and law enforcement. And so there might have been like about maybe 15 transgender people and maybe 10 other law enforcement officers from around the country going through this program. And then later what they were gonna do is team us up with a law enforcement officer that going through this program for, uh, and then uh, actually go and train other law enforcement agencies around the country in doing the, the work between the transgender community and law enforcement. What has been the division over the years. I know in, in a lot of aspects we're trying to, or people are discussing, um, restructuring police departments and, and, and law enforcement as we know it. How will uh, training officers in how to deal with transgender people, how is that part of that whole restructure? Well, what we're trying to do is really figure out in build into their minds that when they make a traffic stop or any type of an arrest basically with a trans person, how should they react and do their job in communication with that uh, transgender person? What should they know about communicating? One thing is how that transgender person wants to be referred to, is that something that's important? Right, uh, what, in part of the training, uh, what happens is when they make that traffic stop, you know, our presentation, uh, like myself, and my driver's license, which used to be uh, my former name and picture on it, if there's a difference in that, then that officer would say, basically, how would you like me to address you? And that way that officer will, you know, hear that that person they stop wants to be either called she, her, or hers, or him and him and uh, he, those kind of pronouns, male and female pronouns, and of course some of them are going with they and them. So that gives that opportunity for that trans person to say, this is how I would like to be addressed. And I might even add with mine, I'll say just call me Karen or Miss Holmes or something like that. So what we're doing is when the officer makes that traffic stop, we want that officer to maybe say like, hey, my name is Officer Brown, I'm with uh, department with uh, Prince George's County Police, and I go by pronouns of him and he. So that kind of gives an, an right there an opening, and he would then say, how would you like me to address you? And that's what we want to see happen. Uh, going back a couple years ago, right before I actually transitioned uh, back in 2010, um, I got stopped by an officer in D.C., and I was like a block away from my uh, nightclub that I was gonna go to. And in that moment, that officer uh, comes up, asks me for my driver's license and registration. I give that to him. He goes back to the cruiser. I guess to go ahead and do a check and stuff. And then when he came back up to me, he asked me, is this you that's in the photograph of the driver's license? And I said, yes. And he said, at that point, how would you like me to address you? And my anxiety from being stopped went from here down to here, which was really good because that just gave me that opportunity to just relax and feel comfortable that he respects me and who I am. And that is so very important. What are some of the other things that you all are teaching uh, or working with police officers and understanding? I'm sure, um, you know, as we transition from police 
doing mental health um, stops opposed to having someone in that field mm -hmm. do stops. I know some areas are transitioning to that. Do you think that would be helpful as well if there's like a mental health episode rather than a police person handling it, having, you know, some sort of counselor come? Well, I think um, right now what they're going through is a sensitivity basic training to understand who we are. A lot of times when I ride with the police officers here in Prince George's County, although that's on hold right now a little bit because of COVID, that gives me a chance and an opportunity to speak to that officer and say, hey, this is who we are. Um, and basically they're looking at everything I do. And I said, you know, the girls that are out here on the street doing sex work, they're not out here because they enjoy it. They're out here because it's a survival situation for them. They've lost their family. They've lost their their children, they lost their home, they lost their job, friends. And so what they're doing is they want food on their table and they want to be able to lay their head down to sleep at night somewhere safe. And they can't do it until they get, you know, a job situation and everything. That's one of the things I'm also working with, uh, with Prince George's County Coalition that I started up in Prince George's County. What we're gonna do is I wanna be able to sit with somebody say, hey, this is how we do a resume. Build that up for them. And then of course, I wanna sit across the table with them and sit there and say, hey, do role playing of a job interview and stuff. Um, also get hooked up with a Salvation Army or a clothing place that does donation, accepts donation for clothes and stuff and say, hey, you know, if we send the girls with a fly or something saying that they're part of our program to your organization or business, can you donate clothes back to them? And that's what we want them to do as well. And so at the, about three weeks ago, toward the end of June for Pride Month, um, I was actually speaking in Fairmont Heights and doing a reef laying there for a couple of the girls that got murdered. And at that point, what we were doing is just basically just talking to them about the community and the girls out there in the street like that. And I had like about four or five different organizations that came up to me right after uh, the speeches was over and said, hey, look, I own a boutique place. I want to be able to be a part of this to donate clothes back. And we're talking about really sharp looking clothes. Um, the library wants to be able to put input in and helping doing resume building and stuff like that. So we got a lot of good response uh, from at least four or five different organizations. And I remember at one time you were telling me another thing is um, the ability to pay for different medications mm -hmm. that may be needed as the person is making the transition. Right. What we really would like to see is doctor's offices or f physicians that be able to give these girls some kind of a discount or something to work with them because a lot of these girls are going on the internet and they're pulling this the drugs down and that's not good because I know when I transitioned I wanted to make sure that I went to see a doctor because they're going to do blood work on you and stuff like that and basically that's going to protect me you know because I'm a diabetic I also have high blood pressure so me getting drugs off the internet would have maybe conflict with that. And so uh, the whole idea is to get them to go to a see a regular doctor and not get drugs off the internet or maybe from a friend that's in the community as well. I wanna go back just a, a few minutes ago to when we were talking about traffic stops. I know what you're teaching officers. What are you saying to trans people about if you get stopped by the police, what are some of the most important things you do? Like you said, there might be some kind of conflict between what's on the license and what the police officer sees. Right. So what are some of the things, whether it's to make sure you explain that beforehand, whether you put your hands on the steering wheel a certain way, what are some of the things that, that tra the trans community needs to know? I think it really starts from the officer themselves. If we have the officers learn in training like hey my name is officer brown you know and i go by pronouns of this how would you like me to address you i think that will bring down the level down a great deal to understand what's going on and that this officer is respecting me and then that way they can feel more relaxed 
Um, I always no, tell I'm saying how how would the person who stopped right and how, I, how should you respond to put that because a lot of times the officer is the tense one right how do you put the officer him or her at ease I tell everybody you know even you know black men you know to just put your hands up on the dashboard actually I tell them to put their hands through the steering wheel up to the dashboard that way when the officer comes up they will see that the, his hands are in visible sight and to just uh, comply with all of their requests to do so. And like I said, how do you explain, how about if an officer feels that you stole a license because <laughs> you're not the person on the, on the, the uh, driver's license. I'm sure there have been instances where they feel like, did you steal this car? Right, Cause right. Because you're not <laughs> the person that I'm looking at right now. Do you just go ahead and explain beforehand or you just I just, you know, here again, it's just basically just explain, you know, and let the officer ask the questions because that's what's going on in, in our class with the DOJ, uh, Community Relations Services Department. When we do the training, they're going to go through their basic questions. Just let that officer go ahead and ask the various questions and you just reply to those questions there. Uh, right now, the way the training has been going, we're teaching the officers to just go ahead and ask those various questions. So it's, it's, it really starts off with the officer just telling, you know, basic questions. They're not supposed to ask uh, questions that aren't related to what's going on, like have you had your surgery yet or have you, they're supposed to stay away from it and that's what we're teaching them to do. I, I'm kind of, I know the answers that you probably want here through, um, the traffic stop but every situation is different you know um, especially for a basic traffic stop well and that's pretty much what we're talking the basic traffic stop if it's something serious like you know a possible stolen car or a robbery that might have happened just just relax give them the ID and stuff like that and just listen to what the officer says and go through the question I think if right from the beginning if the officer does what I was saying at the beginning of identifying himself and see that, okay, in the picture, this person looks different than how they're presenting. That should start having that officer ask the basic questions and not something that's uh, not a good question to ask. And how else can they be put at ease? You said that, that you can uh, put them at ease by asking how they would like to be referred to. What are some of the other things you tell the officers? Uh, Basically, respect. I mean, respect goes a long way when you're when you're dealing with the trans community because a lot of the trans community feel like you're you're not being respected. You know, crime against transgender people has has risen so high. I mean, last year there was 44 murders in uh, the trans community across the country, and out of that 44, probably I think 40 of them were women of color. So that's very, very high. So, you know, teaching the tr girls, you know, to watch where they're going, go, go into places that they shouldn't possibly go in. Um, if you're dating a guy or want to date a guy, be upfront to who they are so that way they don't get assaulted or, or murdered because of who they are if they, the person that they're in a relationship with um, decides to turn on them. And what happens there a lot of times is in a relationship, the guy might say, hey, you know, I'm gonna date you or whatever, but then his friends find out that that girl is trans, they start ribbing or, or calling the guy maybe that he's gay or whatever, call kinds of names, and then he gets upset and murders the girl. So for me personally, I go really a step higher than what I tell the, the other trans community girls that before you get intimate with that person, up front, you need to tell them who you are. And that could be the same for a sex worker. You know, the guy or they're doing some kind of act and then the guy finds out doing the process of the act that that's really a trans person and not a woman that he, has, you know, stopped to see. So I tell people, you know, it's like, before I even go out on a date with a guy, I'm gonna even tell him I'm trans right up from the start because if I, he goes out and spends 75 to $150 on me on dinner, I don't want him to get upset later to find out that I am trans. You are, uh, or you've got a lot of uh, military 
and your background. And it's like things change, it appears, from administration to administration. So, it, it, so things are looking up for the trans community as far as the military is concerned. Yeah, I mean, I tell people, well, when I and talk, you twenty years? How many years? Oh no, I've only done total right now, probably eight years altogether. Okay. Um, I'm a first sergeant for this one particular group. I, they don't really want me to talk about them, uh, but with the Maryland Defense Forces, which is where I started at, when I left that group, I was a sergeant there for them. Um, my time with them, you know, when when we have to hide, and this is until President Obama allowed the trans community to be in the military, I had to kind of hide. I kind of was worried about if I was going to be spotted or told that I was transgender to upper command. It always kept me wondering, okay, what if they find out? You know, those were always in the back of my head. What's going to happen to me uh, being kicked out or something like that? At that point, I didn't have to worry about it once he allowed it because that just brought down my level of, of worrying about that to now I can really totally focus on who I am as a trans person, which is not an issue. I'm doing my job in the military. And so when uh, the past administration <laughs> uh, had that issue and wasn't going to allow us to be in it or didn't want us allowed to be in it, it just brought up a lot of more anxiety probably for other trans people to not be ready when they really should be or doing their job or being afraid that somebody's going to find out about them. Now with our present administration, um, it's been great. You know, I'm sure that's everybody's down at ease and stuff like that. What does that anxiety feel like, um, having to hide? It was it like for me when I first joined the Maryland Defense Force, it was like, okay, I've got an event that's going to be out um, at a base and I'm going to be in a barrack and then the thing of course is in the morning taking showers and stuff like that and the bad part about that at least where I was at it was a, a commu community type shower there were no curtains around each of the shower heads that were there so it's being okay we all have to get up at the same time we all have to get ready to go out for formation and stuff like that how am I going to take my shower? So I know for me, basically, when I first got to the base and doing this, I went and checked it out. I'm like, you know, okay, my anxiety was real high. How am I going to be able to hide, you know, my private parts? Because I hadn't had the surgery yet. And so I basically planned it out that this is the, the shower head I want to use because it's facing kind of a corner that I can do away from everybody else. And they're just seeing, you know, my back. So, um, that was that was very high, and it, all they have to do is let's take a, a curtain and place it around the sh each shower head, and there's the privacy right now. Now you have done a TED talk mm -hmm. before, <laughs> and tell me what are, what are some of the things that you emphasized during your talk? You have something that uh, <laughs> yeah. you want to read to us about that? Well, the first one I did was. Um, on my life basically 40 years of wandering no more and so that was what that first one was for about 10 minute talk and then what TEDx at Ashbury Park the CEO wanted to do was have all of the previous uh, speakers come on and do a one minute uh, speech in regards to um, treat others as you wish to be treated was supposed to be the topic of it so I did mine and I'm obviously I'm gonna read it because this was supposed to come back and uh, do back in April, and I haven't had to do this except when I go speak at other events or something, and especially with uh, the police officers, I, I read this. And it's called Respecting Each Other. Treat others as you wish to be treated is not just the cliche, it's the golden rule. In life, I have feelings, a mind, and a heart who serves and cares for others. I am a human being and wish to be treated as one like you would treat your mother, father, children, siblings, and friends. Just like you treat them with respect, I too want to be treated with respect. The only difference between them and me, I am a transgender woman, one who works for the federal government now for 20 years, a military veteran who was given the honor as Soldier of the Year by the State Guard Association of the United States in 2013. So please, treat me as you would like to be treated. 
it's the golden rule and the right thing to do. And that was what mine was going to be that day. And that, that speaks to what you were talking about as far as respect goes. Just, it's just simple human respect. Right. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> and the more that I talk to these officers, and actually um, I've spoken with um, Holy Cross Hospital um, and also with um, Montgomery County government, other locations as far as, uh, you know, things that are going on in the county and everything. And, and it's getting people to understand just how to treat us. And the biggest thing is like at, at the hospitals, when we go to the hospital, if we decide to go, some don't want to go because of the fact of the fear that they're, how they're going to be treated once they're in there. I mean, for Holy Cross Hospital, I remember one time when I went in there, and you know the question they always ask, have you ever been here before? And I said, I'm thinking, yeah, I had been since my transition. And so she's looking up my name, and she goes, um, I don't see your name. And I said, ah, try Anthony. And so she did that, and she goes, but that's male. And I went, ta-da. <laughs> 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 and she she just basically went, no way. I said, yeah, that's my mother right there. And so she started working on the record to change, you know, the name and the system as well as my gender marker. She couldn't get the chin gender marker working right. So eventually I said, well, technically speaking, I haven't been here before. She goes, right, we'll put you in as a new patient and then we'll merge the records together. And I'm like, okay, cool. And she worked on it for like 20 minutes, even talking with her supervisor and everything. And this basically, the time that she took made me feel real comfortable that she cared about me. And I've told other medical students and stuff like that when I speak to them, I say, look, you're gonna break the life of a transgender person in your care. You need to speak up, especially if there's other nurses or doctors making fun of that trans person once they come in and um, just say stop don't talk like that you know step up be our advocate in that hospital for us so you've spoken to hospital personnel about how to treat patients mm -hmm. and it just boils down to the same thing we've been saying for the last uh, uh, 30 minutes or 20 minutes rather respect basic respect absolutely and like you said she showed that she cared about what was happening with making sure your records were right, right that it said the right thing that it presented you for who you are and that's a boy that's that's a big one yeah with with dealing with the medical community and hospitals and and I could see people not I mean not wanting to go to a hospital be in fear of being disrespected right and that's like the same thing with the police you know obviously they don't have a, a line that I know of as of yet you know preferred name you know but to p tell the officer in the body of your statement this is how this person should be addressed uh, if they have to talk with us. And that might also help in crime situations. You know, if they respect us enough in the report when they come and visit us to do an intake or interview with us, that we won't mind opening up to them because of what's going on. And that may help them solve a crime as well. Now, we're going to have a special guest come in, an additional guest for the show. Um, today so let's take a quick break and we'll bring in our additional guests okay <laughs> you've been watching the sisters for fitness wellness show I'm Stephanie Gaines Bryant we'll be right back um, can I get the now bar please one dollar have a good one you got it hey, what's going on hey let me get a now bar sure one dollar appreciate you, you got it Hello and welcome back to the Sisters for Fitness Wellness Show. I'm Stephanie Gaines Bryant. We have a second guest this morning, or we have a second guest today. We've got Karen Kendra Holmes, guest number one, and now we have mom, Rosetta Holmes. 
So I wanted to talk to you. I'm glad I have the opportunity to just spend a minute mm -hmm. or two with you. Tell me, what was it like when Karen told you that she was ready to make this move to transition? Well, I didn't know anything about it. And she just came one day and uh, she had my two nieces with her. And they start talking and she explained that she was transgender. And to be frank with you, I didn't even know what transgender was. So I didn't understand what she was actually trying to tell me. And, uh, you know, after she explained it, I just said, okay. And then I was in shock, in a sense, because I really didn't know. And uh, they left, and I called one of my girlfriends that uh, she came over and spent the night with me. And we talked, and I sort of cried that night. And then the next day, it was like, uh, this is my child, you know? I mean, uh, regardless. And I love her, and uh, uh, if other people don't understand, that's their problem. So, What yeah. advice do you have to parents who are going through what you went through many years ago? And I think you just said it. Before I ask the question, yeah. you just said it, but I'll let you say it again. What advice do you have for parents? My advice is that you accept your child for who she is and love her because She's part of you regardless. And uh, try to understand that people are born the way they are born. In fact, to be frank with you, my mother, who was like in her 90s, up in her 90s, and after hearing about Karen, it bothered me because my mother and I were very close to the extent that I would talk to my mother about everything. And I didn't know how to bring this to her, and I was, sort of upset. So I went over there and I said, Mom, I got something I want to tell you. So she said, what, it is, what is it, baby? I said, you have to really strain to understand because she was beginning to get Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So she said, okay, baby. She said, cut, cut the TV off, cut the TV off, cut it off. So she said, what is it? I said, well, you know, Karen is, um, I said, well, Tony at that time, I said, Tony is uh, now Karen. So she said, what do you mean? She said, you mean he was a man and now he's a woman? I said, yeah. So she said, well, ain't nobody's business but his. And uh, God, God made everybody and she's not the only one. She said, they've been like that. So I said, yeah, but I got some friends they don't understand and uh, you know, they uh, kind of upset me because she said, well, you tell them to go to <laughs> so I, Good I mean, she was mom. Right. So I said, and mama, I said, I it's one of my family members that you know kind of got upset, and they don't understand. And it. she said, "Well, you tell them to go too." So I said, "Okay," and I felt really good because I knew that she understood me for that moment. And I went in the kitchen. I came back, and she had this angry look on her face. She was really upset about it. You know, that's your child, and she really went off because she was, that was the first grandchild. I mean, she really, you know, so she said, uh, yeah, you, 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 that's your child. And she kept saying it, you know, you Very don't let good. nobody say anything about your child. That's your child. God made him, and God don't make mistakes. That's right, you know, and we're going to wrap it up. On that yeah. note, God <laughs> don't make mistakes. Yeah. Absolutely. Karen, as always, it's a pleasure. This is my first show back since COVID, and I am just honored that you chose to share this time with me oh, Thanks today. again for having me on the show. And, and if anybody has any questions or comments, they can contact me at my email address. K and we'll, we'll put that at the end of the show. We'll give all your email address and all that, that good stuff. But thank you so much for joining me. All right. We've been watching the Sisters for Fitness Wellness Show. I'm Stephanie Gaines Bryant, talking to Karen Kendra Holmes and Rosetta Holmes. Yes. Have a great day, and we will be back again and again and again. This is a new beginning for us. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. Okay, thank you.